What is up guys, this is Luke Hill for Kid Guru, and in this one we're looking at Patriot's newly released Viper Steel RGB memory modules. So we know the Viper Steel memory modules have been around for a while, the non-RGB version, but now Patriot has given them the RGB treatment. So let's have a closer look. But before we do that, if you like what we do here at Kit Guru, make sure you like, subscribe to the channel, help us with the bell icon, head on over to the Kit Guru website where you can read our written reviews and that really helps us out and supports us. And check us out on Patreon and buy a cool t-shirt from our merch store. Anything you can do is much appreciated. Let's get back into the review. The key new feature for the Viper Steel RGB memory modules is clearly the aesthetic. So if I just pick up one of the modules here, you can see that it still keeps the Viper Steel styling. So just a pretty basic, quite frankly, aesthetic design that I personally am quite fond of. Your mileage may vary. But this time, rather than if I just grab one of the conventional steel modules here. So rather than the silver, grey, gunmetal steel appearance, Patriot has gone for a black, so a matte black textured aluminium heat spreader. And of course you've got the RGB light bar across the top. You still get those aggressive fins, but now the clear RGB, or the translucent I should say, RGB light bar houses RGB LED lights. And then another small variation for the RGB modules versus the non-RGB Viper Steel modules are that you don't get a textured Viper logo anymore. So this on the steel modules, the non-RGB versions, was kind of 3D or 2.5D if you prefer. So in my opinion, the color looks better, but the cool design of the 2.5 or 3D texture if you prefer on the Viper Steel non-RGB modules is pretty cool. So a slight downgrade for the RGB version here, unfortunately. These new Viper Steel RGB modules are about 48 millimeters tall, and that's not ridiculously large when we look at some of the competing modules on the market, but it is about three or so millimeters taller than the Viper Steel non-RGB modules. So that's just something to watch out for if you have an overhanging CPU cooler or are likely to hit interference concerns. One point I will make with regards to the aesthetic appearance for the RGB LED lighting is it's actually difficult to see how many LEDs you have underneath that light bar diffuser. And that's actually praise for the modules. So we don't want to see the individual LEDs or the hot spots, for example, if the diffuser is doing its job properly. So credit to Patriot there, because clearly there's an ample number of actual LEDs underneath the diffuser, and the diffuser is doing a good job in keeping what is, in my opinion, a relatively good smoothness and transition between the LEDs. Lighting control is handled through the motherboard synchronization software, so you get support with the big four vendors, Asus, ASRock, Gigabyte, and MSI. We tested the memory modules with our Asus Aura motherboard and we found the implementation to be straightforward to use and we found the lighting quality to be effective. I would say that the lighting speed is good, the brightness is positive and the granularity for the control is actually pretty reasonable. But of course that depends upon the tools within your motherboard vendor's software. I would also say that the color accuracy to my eyes is actually pretty good indeed. However, we did notice that a slight off-white tint was present when we went for a pure white design, but this is quite common. White is particularly difficult to get for RGB memory modules. I'd say the color accuracy is pretty good. We got deep bright blues, we got dark reds, and of course if you prefer, you can simply shut off the RGB for the modules. Other than the slightly off tint white, I was also happy with the transitions between the colors down the light bar diffuser. And if you wanna go with the rainbow puke RGB styling, you can do all that to your heart's content. And it looks pretty smooth on the Patriot, the Viper Steel RGB modules. Overall, I actually quite like the RGB implementation, but of course, this comes down to personal preference, as does the heat sink design, which I think looks quite good. So let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Let's talk specifications. The kit that we have is a 32 gigabyte, two by 16 gig kit running at 3600 megahertz with 1.35 volts XMP 2.0 support. The timings out of the box are slack. They're 20, 26, 26, 46. So even for 3600 megahertz, this is particularly slack. 
at this price point for reasonably spec 3600 megahertz modules these days you're typically talking 18 22 22 42 of course if we ignore the timings for a second and we look at the frequency of 3600 megahertz then that's absolutely ideal still because you can get the one-to-one -one divider between the memory clock and the fabric clock on amd ryzen based systems the specific memory chips used read as Hynix H5AN8G 8N question mark question mark R dash VKC according to Typhoon Burner. That pair of question marks in the code actually makes it quite difficult to understand which particular Hynix modules are being used in the kit. So we reached out to our contact at Patriot and they got back to us and said that this is basically a Hynix AFR kit. So those Hynix AFR ICs are deployed in a dual rank configuration on each of the 16 gigabyte modules. So if we summarize this closer look before moving on to the test system and the performance, we're looking at the Patriot Viper Steel RGB modules. It's a two by 16 gigabyte kit, 3600 megahertz frequency at 1.35 volts XMP. And the timings are 20, 26, 26, 46. The price tag for the kit is currently £164.99 MSRP, but we've struggled to find any availability whatsoever in the UK. We spoke to our Patriot contact and he said that there will be availability soon on Amazon UK. It should be this week, depending on when the video is published. But we'll just have to cross our fingers that we do see some market availability sometime soon. Anyway, I think that's enough for the introduction and the closer look. Let's have a look at the test performance. For our testing, we will be looking at the Patriot Viper Steel RGB memory modules using our GoTo AM4 test system. This uses a Ryzen 9 5950X Zen 3 processor. We're using an Asus Crosshair 8 Hero AM4 motherboard, that's X570, and it's using the Agisa 1100 profile because at the time of writing, the latest Agisa profile with some new tweaking options is still in beta form, so we can't really use that for testing. And then from the graphics card perspective, we have the ludicrously fast Gigabyte RTX 3080 Eagle OC. For the CPU in particular, we are overclocking the chip to 4.6 GHz static all-core frequency, and this helps us eliminate any variations between test runs that will be coming about because of Precision Boost 2 frequency variations. The comparison memory kits that we're focusing on with this new fresh data for our fresh platform are a 4x8 GB or 32 GB Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB kit and that's running at 3600 MHz, 18, 19, 19 timings using Micron EDI ICs. And then we're also including comparison data from a 2x32 GB Patriot Viper Steel non-RGB memory kit that we've previously tested and this runs at 3600 MHz CL18. So it'll be interesting to see if the Hynix AFR equipped Viper Steel RGB modules can hang with the tighter spec on paper, but more budget brand spec tech ICs used on the non-RGB kit. That'll be an interesting comparison. Anyway, I think that covers the test system and the test procedures. If you want more details on all the particular hardware used, the settings used, the comparison points used, head on over to the KitGuru website. Let's have a look at the performance. We see a reasonable start for the Viper Steel RGB memory kit in 7-zip. Middle of the pack scores are registered both in terms of compressing and decompressing numbers. It is interesting to see the Viper Steel RGB kit with its looser timings outperforming the non-RGB version of the same frequency kit. Blender shows very little variance between each tested kit. The Patriot Viper Steel RGB modules cannot quite match the performance of Corsair's expensive Micron e die kit, but the differences are minor. Again, we see the SK Hynix based Viper Steel RGB modules slightly outperforming the higher capacity spec tech based non-RGB kit in Cinebench. Corsair's tighter Micron kit is again at the top of the chart by a narrow margin though. Synthetic memory bandwidth tests show very little difference between Patriot's Viper Steel RGB modules and the premium Corsair Dominator Platinum options in our testing. The Spectec based Viper Steel 64GB kit is again a little slower than the SK Hynix based RGB version though, despite having tighter rated timings and a higher kit capacity. Latency is where the performance of Patriot's RGB kit cannot match the premium Corsair modules. 
but once again we see the SK Hynix based RGB kit outperforming the Spectec modules of the non-RGB Viper steel set despite the LED version having looser timings on paper. Of course the effects of the AMD test system with regards to memory channels and rank interleaving and all those other factors could be having an influence on this performance trend that we're seeing. It's more of the same in gaming related tasks. The Viper Steel RGB memory is marginally quicker than the technically tighter 64 gigabyte Spectec equipped kit, but Corsair's more expensive modules are tough to match. In real world gaming, that translates into higher FPS for the Corsair Micron based kit, which is also more expensive, but the Hynix ICs for the Viper Steel RGB memory do a reasonable job and manage to outperform the spec tech based 64GB Viper Steel kit once again on our AM4 platform. Much to our surprise, Overclocking actually presented us with a reasonable amount of success, which we didn't really expect when we looked at the very slack out of the box timings for the memory kit. Focusing on increasing the frequency while bumping the voltage up to 1.45 volts, but sticking with the 20, 26, 26 stock timings, we hit a maximum frequency of 4066 megahertz. This is a pretty good result in our opinion, but obviously we still have the slack timings and we have that voltage bump. So if we switch our focus on to tightening the timings and using the stock frequency of 3600 megahertz to start with, we managed to get the timings as tight as 16, 18, 18, 46 with the 1.45 volt DRAM voltage applied. And this is actually a pretty reasonable result again and manages to match some of the more premium 3600 MHz kits, of course running XMP out of the box, that are available on the market. So again, another pretty good result from the Hynix AFR ICs on the Viper Steel RGB modules. Now that we know the frequency we could push to and the timings we could tighten to, we aimed for a balance between the two options. This resulted in 4000 MHz, 18, 22, 22, 46 at again 1.45 volts. That was the frequency biased balanced approach and if we looked at the timings biased balanced approach we actually managed 3800 MHz 16 20 20 46 again using 1.45 volts and we didn't try to tweak the voltage down because we just didn't really need to for the interest of testing. You can do that with your own silicon lottery luck of course. So that 3800MHz CL16 result was actually particularly good in our opinion because it allows a 1900MHz fabric clock so you get the one-to-one -one divider on Ryzen 5000 in particular and that's pretty much ideal from an overall system performance perspective. So while the out-of-the-box timings are really lackluster and leave plenty to be desired, when you have pretty much a quick tweak based on our results at least and our luck with the silicon lottery. Something like 3800 MHz at CL16 is really pretty reasonable overall. But of course, as I've said many times, your mileage may vary. So if you have any overclocking data or any results with a similar kit, let us know in the comment section down below. Overall, I think the Viper Steel RGB memory modules are a good addition to Patriot's Viper Gaming series line of products. Put simply, you get an aesthetically pleasing kit of memory with a good RGB light bar implementation. I must say that I'm actually quite positive overall on the RGB implementation. And now of course this is my own personal preference, but I actually quite like the styling. So while we're positive overall on the aesthetic styling and the RGB implementation, it is absolutely undeniable that the stock timings of this kit certainly leave something to be desired. The competitors at this price point are running somewhere in the region of 3600 MHz with 18, 22, 22 timings. With that said, we did manage to overclock the kit to 4 GHz with slightly tighter timings. And we also run comfortably at 3800 MHz, which is a 1900 MHz fabric clock for AMD users with CL16 timings, 4 GHz with reasonable timings or 3800 MHz CL16. Nothing to complain about there in my opinion if you're handy with overclocking. If we now focus on pricing, that looks to be quite a particular sticking point for the Viper Steel RGB modules. At £164.99 MSRP for the 2x16 gig 3600 MHz 20, 26, 26, 46 timings kit that we tested, that's pretty expensive compared to the competition that you get at the price point from pretty much all the vendors, from Corsair, from Adata, from Clev, from Team Group, from Kingston from G-Skill. Pretty much everybody has got a kit that competes at this price point and runs at 3600 MHz. Now that's quite a challenge for Patriot with the Viper Steel RGB modules because the timings are slack. 
So if we look at Corsair, for example, in the UK, you can get a Vengeance Pro RGB modules that compete directly with this kit for about £10 cheaper, so about £155, but they'll run at 18, 22, 22 timings at 3600 MHz. So they're cheaper and they're tighter out of the box. That certainly does make pricing, like I said, a bit of a sticking point with the Viper Steel RGB. If the current US price point of $155 is anything to go by, then when this kit is finally available on the UK market, because availability is very limited at the moment, it's basically non-existent, but when the kit's finally available on the UK market, it could undercut some of the competitors as it's doing in the US. So we'll have to see if that's the case. If that is indeed the case, fine, go ahead and put these on your short list for purchasing. If the price is comparable to some of the other competitors like Vengeance Pro RGB or like the G-Skill Trident Z modules, but you actually quite like the look of the Patriot Viper Steel RGB modules and you want to give a go for overclocking and getting some of the pretty reasonable numbers that we got, then fine, put them on your short list. But at the moment, at more expensive price point than the Corsair competitors in particular, I'd say this is quite a tough sell. So the pricing is going to be pretty key but other than that, I think Patriot's done a pretty good job with a pretty good looking memory kit that has a good RGB implementation, in my opinion, of course. I've been Luke Hill for Kit Guru. Thank you for watching this video review of the Patriot Viper Steel RGB memory kit. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you like the overall aesthetic with the aluminium matte black heat spreader and the relatively low profile, not particularly in your face, RGB light bar? Or do you prefer something a bit more extravagant? Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give us a like, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, all that YouTube stuff really helps us out. If you want to support us, head on over to the Kit Guru website where you can see the written review with photos and charts in more detail. That really helps us out. And you can support us even more by checking out our Patreon page or by buying a cool t-shirt like this from our merch store. And I'll see you in the next one.